summer is finally here and things are beginning to heat up. What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to Immodernation. And I don't know where I was going with that intro. I'm supposed to be doing a review of the Perfect Prime IR0280. It's the newest thermal imaging camera from Perfect Prime. Perfect Prime's marketing executive reached out to me recently asking if I could do an honest review of their camera. And finally, I receive a thermal camera from a company whose name I can actually pronounce. Fleur One Pro. Fleur. Fleur. By the way, thanks to those of you who corrected me on the proper pronunciation of the word Fleur. All of you. This is the IR0280 from Perfect Prime, and it comes in an anti-static bag? Neat. I reached out to Perfect Prime's marketing executive asking if this is the retail packaging. They said that they are considering changing the packaging in the future, but today this is what you get. First up is the manual, which looks like I printed it with my inkjet from home. Cost-saving measures, sure, but they could also just direct me to their website where I can print out an electronic copy for myself. It also comes with a QR code with a coupon. If you can scan it, you can has it. Also comes with a mini USB charging cable. I can't believe it's not a proprietary charging cable. I'm sick of companies making me shell out more cash for more cables. Thank you, Perfect Prime. And of course, the big unit, which is actually not that big. It's about 8.5 inches or 21 centimeters. The color screen is 45 by 60 millimeters, and it comes with five button controls with a trigger on the back, including menu, power, and directional controls. Seems easy enough. The back shows the two camera lenses, the infrared camera, which is a 32 by 32 pixel infrared camera, and the optical camera, which is a 0.2 megapixel. This isn't high resolution like your cell phone camera, but it doesn't have to be. The camera claims it could read temperatures between minus 30 and 1000 degrees Celsius. And I'll do my best to test that out. Let's turn it on and no power right out of the bag. Okay, I'll be right back in the next day. So now I turn it on, it shows the hourglass followed by a perfect prime logo. The operating system is Android and the company says it can be conveniently upgraded from home or office. The manual doesn't say how, maybe I can plug it into a PC as there's no Wi-Fi or OTA upgrades, but I'm suggesting it right now as a future update. Once the system powers on, you're taken right to the thermal camera display. On the side, there's a mini USB port and a micro SD card slot for saving pictures and video. The camera comes with a 16 gigabyte micro SD card pre-installed, and it's a brand name one too. If you don't use the micro SD card, pictures and video can still be saved using the one gigabyte of internal memory. Use it wisely. The manual claims the camera uses an 18650 battery at 2500 milliamp hours. So I took it apart. Shh, don't tell Perfect Prime. Lo and behold, there is an 18650 battery inside. Now I have an 18650 battery capacity tester because I don't believe for a second that this is really 2500 milliamp hours. It's probably closer to a thousand milliamp hours like most Chinese cells, but I'll leave that for another video. Taking pictures and video is easy. Just pull the trigger and release to take a picture. Pull and hold the trigger to take video. Release when you're done. There's also different modes, including thermal, visual, and thermal overlay, similar to the parallax technology used by FLIR. These modes could be toggled using the up and down buttons. Press the left button for filter modes. There's temporal, wide Gaussian, and no filter. I'm still trying to figure out what these modes are for, and I'll get back to you when I figure it out. And the right directional arrow zooms in and out. Hitting the menu button gives you access to the menu options. We'll click the menu button to bring up these Android icons. You have display brightness, date, time, auto off timer, uh, temperature alarm, auto monitor alarm, the units, emissivity, the gallery section, image format, factory reset, color palette, palette on or off, coffee cup, and min max crosshairs on or off. If you're tired of using the directional controls all the time, you might have discovered that the screen is also a touch screen. So instead of using the directional buttons, you can simply click on the icon of your choosing. You can also move the temperature sensor around on the thermal camera display.
Now display brightness can be changed, but don't forget that screen brightness affects battery life. In fact, most Samsung Galaxy owners could tell you that as well. And they probably will tell you it too, in between the crying into piles of cash. The auto off timer is also a nice feature for turning off the display. Unfortunately, it's only limited to 30 minutes. I would have liked to have seen a longer time period for this feature, uh, but there's other features that I'll talk about a little bit later that I think will cover that. The color palette option lets you change the colors of the thermal camera. I found most of these to be unhelpful, so I just left it on the stock. If you're using the color palette, you can also turn the palette guide on and off. I find it useful to leave the palette guide on unless you're looking at a specific spot on the screen. Emissivity controls lets you change the settings based on the type of material that you're scanning. Perfect Prime gives you an emissivity table to be able to adjust your own settings. There's also a high low temperature alarm. This allows you to set the upper and lower thresholds and all you need to do is pull the trigger to turn it on. But my favorite feature is the auto monitor alarm. When a certain temperature is reached, the alarm goes off. The duration can be set anywhere from 15 minutes all the way up to two hours. And it can also be turned on by pulling the trigger. But Chris, you're whining. I don't want to hold the camera for two hours. My arm's going to get tired and it will probably fall off. And you know what? You're not wrong. However, Perfect Prime has thought about this and they've included a quarter inch screw on the bottom that you can attach to a tripod or a stand or you can simply stand the camera upright and it will balance evenly on a desk. The camera is lightweight and the handle is comfortable. I didn't face any hand fatigue at all. Max Min crosshairs help you find wherever the high and low temperatures are on the screen, but they're rather annoying because they jump all over the place, so I was better off just turning this feature off. All right, so you've had a chance to see the thermal camera. Let me talk about what I like and what I don't like. First, what I do like. The handle is comfortable. It's got a good weight to it. The touch screen is very easy to use. The navigational menus are very intuitive. I like that it comes with its own micro SD card for expanded storage. It's an all-in-one unit. You don't need to connect it to a computer or a smartphone to be able to operate it. I like the process of recording. It's very simple. You just point the camera at the thing that you want to measure and you pull the trigger once to take a picture. You hold the trigger for video. I, I thought that was very intuitive. I like the fact that it comes with temperature monitoring that I can just leave it alone and it will continue to monitor temperatures without me having to be there. And of course, I don't know if this is supposed to be part of the device or not, but I like that I can actually charge it while I'm using it. I thought the temperature reading was pretty accurate. I measured a pot of boiling water and I, it was pretty spot on, you know, with give or take a few degrees here or there. Um, it, that might have had to do with the emissivity of the glass container, maybe changing the emissivity settings in the camera might have produced better results. I found the battery life to be pretty good. I didn't really turn it on or off. I've left it on the entire time that I've been testing. The screen powers off after a few minutes and I'm down to like a third of a battery after a couple days use. All right, let's talk about some of the things that I think can be done better. First of all, the heat map overlay. I don't like the fact that it's kind of offset just a little bit. I wish that um, the heat map overlay was on top. I understand it has to do with the distance between the two thermal cameras, but I I would think that you could correct something like that in software. I mean, obviously FLIR was able to do that with their uh, FLIR 1 Pro camera that I reviewed earlier. Also, the resolution was kind of low. It's only 32 by 32 pixel. Uh, it's kind of hard to make out what the object is sometimes. Thank you to the visual overlay that helps me to identify where the hot spots are. But I kind of wish that the thermal camera had a higher resolution. Um, again, you will see that reflected in the price, which I'll talk about later. There's only 30 minutes of on time with this, but of course that could be changed in monitoring where it could be left on for up to two hours. Even though I liked the long battery life, it took way too long to charge the battery. So with this device, you're going to want to constantly keep it charged much like a cell phone. There's no quick charge or dash charging to be able to charge this thing up really fast. If it dies, you're going to be stuck without using the device for a while. Even though the video recording and the pictures were a nice feature, I don't like the fact in video recording that you have to hold the trigger the entire time in order to record. I wish that you kind of had a, another option where you click and hold once maybe to activate video and then you click again to turn video off. Uh, that way I don't have to be there standing the entire time in order to record a video. 
I think that would be a good option in a future update. And finally, there are some aspects of this device that remind you that this isn't really a high-end device. Uh, one of the things that I noticed is the buttons. How do I say this? The controls were slightly off-center. Um, these little printed triangles weren't quite centered on it. Um, I know that has to do with the manufacturing process. It's not a major gripe, um, especially when you consider the price, but it is just something that I noticed. Lastly, let's talk about price. I wanted to keep this out of the pros and cons because this is really a big factor. They could go either way depending on features and budget. So this device at the time of the review goes for about $210, which is considerably cheaper than a lot of other thermal imaging cameras. However, Depending on the features and what you're looking for, you might wanna spend a little bit more money to get a higher end. This is definitely a device more for hobbyists, not for uh, contract professionals. Um, if you're gonna be doing a lot of thermal monitoring, especially you want uh, multiple temperature points on, um, on whatever it is that you're scanning, you're probably gonna to wanna to move more towards a device like a FLIR 1. All right, so I've talked a lot about the FLIR 1 Pro, and that's because I reviewed this device previously in another video. By the way, if you haven't seen that video, oh, wrong way, idiot. That way, uh, click on the card in the upper right corner. The first thing I wanna point out to you about this device is that it's half the price of the FLIR 1 Pro. It's also an all-in-one unit. It doesn't require a cell phone to attach to it. Um, unlike the FLIR one, which required an iPhone or an Android. By the way, if you have an Android device, it does require a USB type C connector. So your older Android device, not gonna cut it with this one. Second of all, what's nice about this is it has a greater range of temperature. Now remember it goes from minus 30 all the way up to a thousand degrees Celsius. The biggest standout difference between the two is the resolution. The cameras for the FLIR one are considerably higher. Uh, the camera for the FLIR 1 has a 1080p optical camera, whereas the um, Perfect Prime only has a 0.2 megapixel, which I think if you do the calculations is around 400 by 400 uh, pixels. So uh, right there off the bat, you notice that even the optical cameras are different. The other difference is the thermal camera. The FLIR 1 has a resolution of 160 by 120 on the thermal camera, whereas the Perfect Prime only has a resolution of 32 by 32. I don't think this is gonna hurt for too many people, but you are gonna notice immediate difference between using the two products. One thing I can appreciate about this handheld device is the battery life. The battery life on this device is significantly better than that of the FLIR 1. I remember using the FLIR 1 Pro, even after 10 minutes of use with the FLIR 1, the battery life drops significantly. Uh, this one, like the battery will go at least for maybe a day, two days, maybe more, especially when it idles. The other thing that you're gonna lose with this device is a lot of functionality. So the FLIR 1 definitely comes with a lot more options. It has the gallery, it has the full application for your smartphone, which by the way, does require you to have an account to use. So uh, thankfully, this one doesn't have an account. And I know that was a deal breaker for some of you that uh, talked about it in the comments section of my last video. Don't need an account, don't need an app, don't need a smartphone. This is it, and it's half the price. So those are just some things to consider if you're looking for a thermal imaging camera. If you're looking to buy a thermal imaging camera, the first thing you need to ask yourself is what features do you need? And uh, if you can afford to take shortcuts on certain things. I think this is a great device for a hobbyist um, if you are going to be professionally uh, recording and you want the highest resolution possible and you're not just looking to monitor something, you probably want to go with the FLIR 1. But if you're just looking for a quick temperature measurement, this is the one to get. By the way, I want to let you know this weekend only, the IR0280 is 20% off on the Perfect Prime website if you use the promo code 20OFF. If you're watching this video a little bit late and you weren't able to get on that sale, not to worry because you can still get 10% off if you use my promo code in Modernation, and that's case sensitive with a capital I and a capital N. Full disclosure, I do receive a commission when you use my coupon code. See, I'm not a shill, I'm a sellout. Well, now that I've got this thermal imaging camera here, I'm gonna go light some things on fire and see how hot they burn. I'm just kidding. Please don't do that. Oh, I'm gonna lose my YouTube account, aren't I?
Thank you so much for checking out this video and if you enjoyed it make sure you slap that like button below and share the video and while you're at it why not join the modern nation and get subscribed by clicking on that subscribe button below and hey when you do don't forget to click on the bell icon inside the button to be notified the moment that i release new videos if you have any comments or questions be sure to leave them for me in the comment section below or why not hit me up on social media i'd love to hear from you guys and when you buy products from Amazon, consider using the affiliate links in the video description below. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see ya!